Hi, my name is Jasmine Proto. I'm the Cultural Development Coordinator here at the Lincoln Museum and Cultural Center. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, our Fractor collection here at the museum. And uh, it's a particularly special uh, collection that we have here um, because Canadian Fractor is relatively rare. So Fractor was a type of watercolor and calligraphy that was primarily done by uh, Pennsylvanian German Mennonites. Um, and they brought this type of folk art with them when they immigrated to Canada from uh, Pennsylvania in around 1780 to uh, the 1830s is when this particular um, folk art was popular. The word fracture actually comes from the Latin word fractura uh, and this describes the kind of uh, calligraphy and text that you'll see um, where each letter is fractured or broken from the next. Um, there are different kinds of fractor fonts, but uh, the most common is black letter or gothic, um, and you'll see that used in a lot of um, German texts, uh, particularly from the medieval period around 1500s onwards. And um, we are very lucky to have a large fractor collection. Uh, we have approximately 34 works. The folk art is uh, extremely beautiful and very vibrant. The colors are um, a primary palette mostly, um, bright blues and greens, yellows and reds. Um, and this, per this fractor was uh, very sensitive to light, so uh, in order to preserve this collection for future generations, the museum was um, interested in creating some reproductions so that we can display the fractor uh, for the public to see, um, but also keep the fractor safe for, uh, for future generations to enjoy. Um, watercolor is notoriously uh, delicate and uh, light exposure will fade the colors and the fractor uh, designs over time. All right. So for works on paper, um, it's actually best practice for uh, the people who are working with the material to use clean, dry hands with no lotion and no jewelry. Um, we never touch the surface of the painting itself, uh, so we always handle the sides or sometimes we hand, uh, handle the mount. So this is an acid-free um, matting board that we use to keep the object stable. Um, we don't use gloves because there's a higher increase of rips and tears. Um, so that's one reason why conservators and museum professionals uh, use clean, dry hands when handling anything made of paper. So here at the museum, we are actually really lucky to have some pieces that traveled with early Mennonites when they came from Pennsylvania. Um, so these pieces were created in Pennsylvania uh, and they were brought in Bibles. They were usually uh, parts of uh, religious texts such as songbooks. And um, it was really important that they were brought here because uh, there was really limited space when they traveled in Conestoga wagons. Um, you can imagine that if you had to pack up your household in uh, one, <laughs> one trip, um, there is very few things that uh, they were able to take. And these pieces were some of the pieces that they actually decided to bring with them. So that's really kind of shows how important they believed these were. Um, so these often illuminated baptismal records, um, marriage records, uh, sometimes they were um, illuminating Bibles themselves, sometimes they were book plates. Uh, one example that we have in the museum that actually is from 1791 um, is this beautiful book here. And you can see that um, the style of it is quite early, so um, the colors are, are quite muted because of how old that it is um, and being exposed obviously over time, but they've been really well preserved, particularly because they've been kept in this book. Um, and you can see that the fractor uh, word font is actually used inside the book itself. Um, this printed book here has the same fractured font uh, and it was printed in 1790. Um, so the person actually, uh, whoever created this fractor, the artist did that uh, quite recently after they got the book itself. Um, finding a book of this exact size <laughs> and the exact uh, kind uh, is quite difficult. So um, our conservator was able to find something uh, similar. So this book was um, actually created in 1780, so it's of a similar time period, um, but she made the, the actual fractor reproduction um, to scale, so it's exactly the same size as it is in this smaller book here. Um, but the material components are relatively the same. Um, the paper is wove paper, so you can actually see the, um, the lines of the sieve um, when someone actually pulls the paper, uh, the pulp, up through a, a sieve um, in order to, to dry the paper. Um, when they're making that. So they both have the same material components. So we welcome you to come and uh, see our Fractor in person when we are in our new museum space. Uh, the Fractor will be on permanent display in the front gallery. Thank you very much. <laughs>